what this flight attendant did after spotting a threat inside the flight was totally unexpected. Sheila Fedrick is a well-known flight attendant, and she has been working in the field for 10 years. However, she has never in her 10-year career come across a situation quite like this one. All she saw was a girl sitting next to the window and she looked incredibly suspicious. The flight attendant immediately realized that she needed to know who this girl was and what her purpose was. What she found out after doing a little investigating completely turned her whole world around. Fedrick had been working as a flight attendant for Alaska Airlines for 10 years now. This 49-year-old stewardess had created a big name for herself and was known for how seriously she took her job. Her positive attitude and her day-making smile made her a pleasure to work with. As a stewardess, her job is to look after the needs of passengers in the plane, get them refreshments, and maintain a positive attitude around them. But on one fateful day in 2011, she was carrying on with her daily duties when she spotted something very suspicious. The San Francisco-bound flight took off from Seattle with hundreds of passengers on it. As usual, Sheila was to welcome all the passengers with a smile and everything was carrying on like normal. This trip would be a short one, only two hours. However, she had no idea that this short trip was going to flip her world completely upside down, and she was about to change a passenger's entire life. The job of a flight attendant seems to be very underrated by today's standards. The job of a flight attendant is to not only take care of the people around them, but they're also the bridge between the passengers and the flight management. It's crucial for them to make sure that every passenger has a comfortable journey through the entirety of their flight and intervene when something isn't right. There have been many incidents involved when it comes to flights. There is always a possibility that flights could be hijacked, glitches in some kinds of equipment, and countless other possibilities. In many of these cases, it was the flight attendants that emerged as the heroes. However, the case that involved flight attendant Fedrick was completely different. Fedrick had been in the business for a decade, and the experience really helps her when it comes to grasping the mood of the passengers and their mood and state of mind. The day the incident occurred, she was taking rounds in the flight to see if anyone needed anything when her eyes captured a peculiar sight. Upon first glance, she realized something was not right. There was a young woman sitting next to the window, and to Fedrick, the girl looked very odd. She couldn't explain how, but she just didn't look normal. I noticed her. She just wouldn't give me eye contact. Um, he was well-dressed, and she wasn't. Strangely, nobody else had noticed this weird girl except her. She imagined that she must have been tired or just making it up. She needed someone to confirm her assumption. So I just wanted to get to the bottom of what was going on, because in the back of my mind, I was trying to let it go, and something just said, don't let it go. The girl had a very suspicious appearance. She was wearing odd clothes and her hair was incredibly messy. She was also behaving in a strange way and she looked like she was trying hard not to look anyone in the eye. And I was trying to get her to make eye contact with me and she finally looked up and the look in her eye was just heartbreaking. Fedrick looked around to see if she was with family and didn't look like she was. However, when she saw the man beside her, she was shocked. The man seemed to be wearing very expensive clothes and he looked incredibly wealthy. He looked like a businessman of some sort and looked very clean. Unlike the girl, who was sitting next to him completely disheveled. Was the girl ill, perhaps? Or could there be another reason for the contrast between the two? The difference between the two was completely earth-shattering. They seemed completely lost and it was not difficult to see that the man was wealthy. Were the two related? Fedrick needed an answer to all her questions, so she went closer to the girl to get a closer look at the situation at hand. One other thing that piqued her curiosity was that the two weren't speaking to each other at all. Even though it was suspected that the two were together, they didn't seem to share any familiarity with each other. Fedrick had never seen anything like this before in her life. What was the relationship between the two? Fedrick noticed new things about the girl as she began to approach her seat. The girl was sitting on the seat near a window and she looked strictly out the window from the second she got on the plane. The bruises that I saw on her, the way her demeanor, her appearance, the way she would not answer me, the way she would always look at him. The girl was laying backward on the seat like she had no energy whatsoever to keep herself up. Was she in some kind of danger or was she the source of the danger? I knew something was just not right. Fedrick knew she needed to immediately speak to the girl. But how exactly was she going to do that without alerting the suspicious man? 
The man was sitting close to the young lady's side and didn't seem like she would be able to get her alone. Then, she got an idea. The idea she had in her mind was a risky one indeed. She knew very well that if she had failed to execute it properly, she would have to face some serious consequences. However, she knew it was important that she went ahead with it. She walked towards the girl and the man with her heart beating out of her chest. She decided to interact with the man and the girl. Me and my coworker, we were on the beverage and snack cart and I had to ask them um, would they like a beverage. It was the best thing she could think to do. She also had another thing on her mind. My co-worker distracted the gentleman. I was trying to get eye contact from her. The man reacted quite unexpectedly when she tried to engage with the woman. He tried to stop Frederick from interacting with the girl beside him by interrupting her. The flight attendant then noticed something else about the girl. For some reason, the girl completely resisted making eye contact with Frederick when she began speaking to her. The man suddenly got defensive when Frederick began to speak to her. The whole situation was getting weirder by the minute. It was then that Fedrick concocted another plan. For the rest of the flight, Fedrick kept a close watch on the girl and the man. When she finally got the chance to speak to the girl alone, and she turned around and she looked at me, I got her attention and I mumbled, bathroom. And I did a pencil sign with my, with my finger and she kind of nodded her head a little bit. This was a risky move and she didn't know if the man would find out. Frederick was taking a stab in the dark. I saw them get up. Uh, the gentleman let her out and they were coming toward the back and I said, oh my goodness, they're about to come and use the bathroom. I said, excuse me? And then he said, yes, she needs to use the bathroom. And I said, okay, okay. Luckily, the girl did end up using the restroom and when she did, she noticed something unusual left on the window of the plane. Frederick quickly had to decide what her next move would be at that moment. So I thought, how can I get this note to her? Then I said, oh my God, I could put it in the, in the lavatory. The girl saw a note attached to the window and there was something written on the paper. When she held the paper in her hand, she realized it was a note left by the flight attendant. I said, if you need help, write on this note. And then I left my phone number at the bottom. And uh, she wrote in the note, I need help. The girl responded to the message. Fedrick knew what she had sensed was correct. This was indeed an emergency situation, and she made sure that the man did not catch wind of her plan. Fortunately, the man never hinted at suspicion, but Frederick was unsure if the girl actually needed her help or not. Frederick was stunned when she saw the note were laid an answer that confirmed her suspicion. The girl did need her help and was in danger, and knew Frederick could assist her. This is why when she saw the note, she immediately sprung into action. The girl was most likely being taken to San Francisco without her approval. However, Frederick had only one question. Why? After getting the note, Frederick didn't waste any time to do what she did next. She immediately barged into the pilot cockpit and informed them about the girl. And I picked up the intercom to call the captain. And I said, Captain, we need the authorities to meet the plane. And I explained to the captain what was going on. And he says, OK. He said, we, we can make that happen. The pilot then called the police from their staggering height of 30,000 feet. Now that the San Francisco police had been informed, it was in their hands. All they had to do was land the plane. As soon as the plane landed, the local police were deployed onto the terminal, onto the plane, and the man was arrested for questioning. The girl had finally been rescued, and when Frederick learned what danger she had been rescuing the girl from, she felt a huge lift from her shoulders. The situation indeed was more than she would ever expect it. The girl had been a victim of human trafficking. Fedrick, of course, knew that there was a problem, but she didn't know the problem would have been this large. The girl had been abducted and was taken to San Francisco. The teen would have spent her whole life sold into slavery had Fedrick not stepped in. Fedrick explained to new reporters the condition of the young lady. Weight, her demeanor, her appearance, the way she would not answer me, the way she would always look at him. She looked like she had been through pure hell, no doubt. Fedrick had saved this girl's life. Fedrick was able to shine a light on the situation that many failed to acknowledge. She said, Our company trains us on what to notice, what to look for. They also train us to what to look for in certain situations like that. I could have seen these young girls and young boys and didn't even know. If you see something, say something. Even the smallest thing can be a huge difference. 
In 2017, about 50,000 women and young girls fell victim to human trafficking in the United States. Unfortunately, almost all of these ladies were trafficked for prostitution purposes. Around 2,000 human traffickers were arrested by the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement. However, only 400 of them were identified. Thanks to Fedrick, she listened to her intuition and she acted upon it. It was only because of her that a young life was saved. These days, the girl is living a better life and has a brighter future ahead of her. Along with the message, the girl had also taken the note that had Fedrick's phone number on it. The girl must have memorized her number because Fedrick says, I put my phone number on the note that I left for her and I guess she memorized it. So a few weeks later, she called me. She then did something to show Fedrick her gratitude. The flight attendant has since been very vocal about incidents such as this. She implores to other stewardesses to be eyeful of the passengers they tend to on planes. She says they never know when someone might need their help. According to her duties apart from taking care of the passengers, an attendant should also pay attention to the appearance of the passengers, since it can say a lot. Nancy Rivard, a former flight attendant and founder of Airline Ambassadors, actually trains her airline crew to understand the signs that a human trafficking victim would give away. These signs include the victim not being able to answer questions, not looking up, and the look that they are being controlled. Fedrick has the membership of this training house. In February of 2017, Rivard, along with her co-workers, made their way to Houston to interact with around 100 flight attendants. It was a training session in order to teach the crew how to spot the signs of human trafficking. The training stretches across two days in which human trafficking victims opened up about their experiences to flight attendants. The attendants were trained to spot passengers who looked nervous, scared, or ashamed on board the flight. They were also told to check the person who was accompanying them. They look like a parent or a relative. If not, you may have a situation of human trafficking on your hands.